Hi everyone, uh, my name is Mlungi Singosi. Once again, we're back together. And uh, today we'll be looking at, uh, uh, continuing rather with the sequences and series, but we'll be looking at uh, the geometric uh, sequence this time around. Uh, so yeah, if you haven't subscribed, please uh, uh, welcome to our channel and consider being part of the family by subscribing and hit that notification bell. Um, and um, by the way, for those of you who might need assistance with either mathematics or physical science, uh, you're more than welcome to get in touch with me. And uh, our information or rather our email address is info at mlungisinkosi.co.za. All right, so let's get into our lesson for the day. All right, so first of all, we're looking at the geometric sequence. So remember, we started with the arithmetic sequence and we said, look, this is where you are constantly adding, uh, you know, a number or subtracting a number, whichever one you might, uh, whichever way you might want to look at it. But this time around, we are looking at, you know, if um, a sequence, say, for instance, let's take one, uh, three, nine. Okay, let we take that as an example. So clearly, if you took the difference between three and one, uh, that would give us two. So the difference between that would give us two. And the difference between nine and three, definitely that would give us six. So clearly, uh, what's happening here is that you are not, you cannot be adding, you are not adding a constant number. Okay, so it is not an arithmetic sequence right however if now i want to look at what is happening here um between one and three so it means that one multiplied by three it means that i multiplied by a number here one multiplied by three gives me the second term which is three and three multiplied by another three actually gives me the third term which is nine now, this time around, we are talking about a common ratio. It means that you are multiplying by a constant, okay? So now, the formula for a, um, a geometric sequence, we say, okay, I'm not going to really spend much time deriving it. So we say we simply use AR to the N minus 1. And remember what we said is that A is the first term so this would be the first term of our sequence okay uh, first term sorry about that okay and r is what we call the common ratio okay so that is our common ratio now what we're going to do is just to look at how to apply in fact let's take the very sequence that we have there let's try to find uh, the fifth term of that sequence and let's also try to find, let's say, the 10th term of the sequence, okay? Right, so what we're simply going to do is we're going to identify what is our first term. So our A value is 1, okay? And our R value, we've just shown you there. Now, how you work out the common ratio, please remember, when we had the arithmetic sequence, we could say, uh, to get the common difference, you said T2 minus T1. But this time around, to get the common ratio, we'll say it's going to be T2 divided by T1. And of course, you do know that um, the same thing that I did for between the second and the first term, I would do between the third and the second term. So it means that the common ratio, I can simply also find by taking the third term divided by uh, the second term. So essentially, um, I can say to get the common ratio, okay, I can say, well, it's going to be Tn divided by Tn minus 1, okay? So N would be whatever, uh, 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 you know, term it is. So if you've got the 50th term, you can say T50, divided by T49, and that should give you the uh, the common ratio. All right, so we said our, our value uh, for the um, example above is 3. All right, so now how do we find uh, the fifth term? So it means that to get T5, okay, I will simply say it's going to be our A. Um, so that's going to be 1. In fact, let me just uh, write it down. 
So that's one multiplied by our ratio, which is three uh, to the n minus one. So that's five minus one, okay? So uh, this would be our fifth term. So in this case, we're going to say, okay, uh, these are exponents now. So we're going to say this is three to the power four. Okay, I'm just dragging it so that you can just simply uh, see what I'm doing there uh, so that it's easy to follow on for you. Right, so to get the fifth term of our sequence, okay, so we just simply say t5. Okay, let's do some exponents there. So what is 3 to the power 4? Okay, um, if you note, that's going to be 81. You can put that on your calculator, 3, uh, yx4. Okay, so that should give me, uh, remember, that's 3 times 3 times 3, okay? And that should give you 81. So it means that the fifth term of the sequence should actually be 81, okay? Right. And then uh, if we wanted to find, we said uh, the 10th term, I believe. So I would say T10 would be, again, our A value, uh, R to the n, so that's 10 minus 1. So we know that our a value in this case is 1, okay? Our r value, we said it's 3 and obviously to the power 9, okay? Uh, I wouldn't even dare attempt uh, to put, uh, to try and work that out uh, on my head. So I'm going to say 3 to the power 9, uh, that gives me quite a big number and multiply that by 1 and 19,000. Uh, 683. So that would be the 10th term of the sequence. Okay, so uh, essentially that is what happens when you've got an arithmetic sequence. All right, so what I want to, us to do is just to, you know, take a couple of examples that we can apply this on. Okay. Once again, um, so let's look at this quick example. Right, they say determine the first three terms of the geometric sequence of which the seventh term is 192 and the second term is 6. All right, so first of all, we are told that it is a geometric sequence, right? So because they've told us that it's a geometric sequence, we know the formula for a geometric sequence. However, we don't have the sequence in front of us, okay? Um, we need to determine the first three terms. However, we do know that the formula for a geometric sequence, we did say that this is a to the r multiplied by r uh, to the power n minus 1. Now, what did they give us? They gave us the second term. So it means that we've got t2. Okay, we don't know what the value of A is, so I'm just going to leave that as A. We don't know what the common ratio is, okay, but we do know that uh, N is 2, so that's going to be 2 minus 1. So it means that uh, if we simplify that, this is going to be A, 2 minus 1 is 1, so that will be R to the power 1, and this is equal to, if you note there, we said it's equal to 6, okay? Right, so now uh, for t6, uh, they said the, um, uh, yeah, the seven term, sorry about that. Uh, so the seven term, so t7, again, we know would have said a, uh, again, r, but we don't know uh, what the value of r is. So this is going to be seven minus one, which is obviously 6, so that's going to be a r to the power 6, and this is equal to 192. Now, let's do this. Let's say this is our first equation, okay, and let's say this is equation number 2. Right, so we've got two equations that involve exponents, okay? So how can we now solve these two equations? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up these equations in such a way that I can be able to eliminate at least one of the variables. And the easiest way to do that is that I'm simply going to take equation 2 divided by equation 1. If you'll notice there, so what we're going to have is uh, on equation 2, we've got AR 
um, uh, equation, yeah, a equation two, yes, we've got a r to the power six, okay, uh, which is equal to 192. And I'm going to divide the left hand side divided by equation one, which is a to the power r. Um, and we said this is, of course, if the left hand sides are divided, so are the right hand side. Whatever I do on the left, I do on the right hand side. Okay, so what that does is that I'm dividing two things there. So uh, it cancels out the a's. And now exponentially, what do I have? I've got r to the power six divided by r to the uh, power one. Uh, you know the laws of exponents. Okay, for those of you who haven't done that, of course, I haven't covered it in this channel as yet, uh, but I will get to it. So what we simply are going to have is that we're going to end up with r to the power five because we have this to the power one. So we know the laws of exponents. That's going to be six minus one. Okay, I'm trying to write as neatly as possible. Okay, so I'm going to have six minus one. And uh, let's see, what's, a, uh, what's 196, uh, sorry, 192 uh, divided by six. Okay, I've got my calculator right in front of me. Okay, and it's giving me an answer of 32. Okay, so now I know that it means r to the power five uh, is equal to 32. Okay, so uh, I am going to take the uh, cubic root of that. Um, all, all you can just simply do is just uh, say, we're multiplying that by one over five. Uh, but remember what you do on the left hand side, you do on the right. So that's to the power one over five. Okay, so I've got R. Now, uh, if you think about 32, this is the same as 2 to the power 5. So uh, one thing about the laws of exponents, um, whenever you've got uh, exponents, what you try and do is that you break them down into prime factors, right? Um, so 32, how can I break down 32 into a prime factor? Uh, I realize that, uh, or even if you can just put it in your calculator, right? Uh, let's do exactly that. As, uh, 32. And that's going to be 1 over 5. And I get an answer of 2. Okay. So it means that our constant or our common ratio is 2. Right. Now, we need to go back and get or determine the value. Okay. We need to go and determine the value of uh, um, uh, A. So we can now substitute uh, the common ratio, which is r is equal to 2 into, okay, let's say equation 1 so that it's easier for us, okay? So remember, we had that for equation 1, so it means that we're going to find our common ratio, now, uh, I mean, our uh, uh, first term. So we know that a r uh, is equal to 6. We said our first, um, our second term, rather, was 6. So now we know the value of r, so we're going to say we're looking for the value of a, but our r value, we just found it to be 2, and this is equal to 6. So of course we can divide both sides by, ah, sorry, I'm already thinking about the answer in my, in my head. So divide both sides by 2, okay? Uh, what I do on the left, I do on the right. So a is now equal to 3. 6 divided by 2 would be equal to 3. So now I've got my first term as well as my common ratio. Now let's find, let's try and find out what is, um, what is our sequence. So we've got our first term is 3, but how do we determine the second term? We simply say uh, to get the second term, remember I am going to say a r to the 2 minus 1. To get the third term, what do I do? It's a r to the power 3 minus 1. Remember, that's constantly what you do um, with, um, with geometric sequences, right? So let's do that. So this is going to be 3. That's our first term. Uh, what's our a value? That's 3. 
our r value is 2, 2 minus 1, that would give us 1, okay? And our third term, 3, that's going to be 2, and that's 3 minus 1, and that would give us 2. So let's try and get that. So that's 3. 3 times 2, that would give me 6. Okay, and it does concur quite well uh, with what we found as being the second term, uh, what as we were told. Right, and then um, here we're going to start with the bracket. Uh, 2 squared is 4. And 3 times 4 would actually give us um, 12. Okay, right. And uh, you can see that progression there. 3 times uh, 2 is 6, and 6 times 2 is 12. And of course, you can continue and go on and on and on. Okay, so that is how we would find the first three terms. I hope uh, that was helpful. Right, and I want us to quickly rush into another example, okay? And we'll um, obviously wrap up the lesson. All right, uh, welcome again. So we are continuing uh, our next example. So they say the first four terms of a geometric sequence are 7, X, Y, and 189. All right, so quickly, I want us to look at that. How would we tackle that question? They say determine the values of x and y. Now, we don't want to overly complicate it. Now, what we have there is the first term. So we would, uh, we already know what a is. a is equals to 7. But we don't have the common ratio. Okay. But I want you to note we already have a value for the fourth term. Okay. So let's take that quickly. So we know that a is 7. But we also know T4, which is A times R to the 3, is equal to 189. Okay, so let's try and work that out. I know what the value of A is. That's 7 multiplied by R to the power 3 uh, equal to 189. Okay, let's work that out. Uh, so divide both sides by 7 first. Okay, uh, so that would be 189 divided by 7. That gives me 27. R to the power 3 is 27. And all we simply do is take the cube root uh, of that. But remember what I do on the left, I do on the right. Just a quick warning. Uh, if this was, uh, we're taking the root of a, um, you know, of an, an, an even number. Remember that the answer can possibly be plus or minus. But because it's an odd number, we can just leave it as, you know, with the sign that it has. So in this case, I get R is equal to 3. So we've got now the value of A and we've got the value of R. We know that our R value is actually equal to 3, right? Okay, so they say which term is equal to 15,303 and 9 rather. Okay, so let's find that out quickly. If you don't mind, I'm just going to do it uh, 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 just next to this here. So this is our second solution. So now we want to know which term uh, is actually um, 15,309. So we know we've got Tn. Okay. Um, this is AR to the power N minus 1. And this is equal to uh, 15,309. Okay. So we already know two things. We know that A is 7. We know that R is 3, but this is the power N minus 1. And please, I'm just going to introduce something here. No, I haven't done it on the channel as yet, but I want to show you how to tackle this type of a question. Okay, so that's 309. Okay, so uh, first of all, you cannot multiply between those two because remember that 3 uh, already has a power in it, and that's power N minus 1. So what we can do is we can divide by 7, okay, so that we get rid of that, okay, but what we do on the left, we do on the right, so we've got 3 to the power n minus 1 is equal to, let's see, 15, 309, uh, divide by 7, okay, and that gives me 2, 1, 
eight seven. Uh, sorry, yeah, two one eight seven. I said eight nine instead. Okay. Um, right. So now that's two one eight seven. Okay. Now, how then do we solve for something like this? Um, I want you to please note, what we can try to do is just try to break down that number that we have there in terms of exponents, okay? Um, but what I would actually just uh, jump down to, you can just quickly just introduce logs, okay? It makes it simpler for you uh, if you wanna go there. So in this case, I'm going to introduce logs on both sides. So I'm simply going to say, well, the log of um, three to the power n minus one is equal to the log of 2187. Of course, you could have uh, worked it out a little bit. Uh, um, yeah, the, the, there is another way in which you, you could have worked this out, but I'm choosing this one. Okay, so now uh, remember the law of logs. What you can do is that we've got a power there. Okay, the jump down rule. Okay, so we could have n minus one uh, to the log of three, okay, is equal to the log of two, one, eight, seven, okay, and all you simply do, we've got n minus one, we can divide, uh, in fact, uh, I should have done that first, uh, we can divide both sides by uh, log of three, okay, so I'm going to simply say just log three on this side, and obviously what I do on the left, I also do on the right. So I've got n minus one is equal to, now let's take the log of that number, okay? So I'm going to say the log of 2187, okay? Divided by the log of three, and I get seven as my answer. But remember, we are looking for n, so n if I go, if I take that to the other side, n is equals to eight. It means that the eighth term would actually be the number that was given, okay? And of course, uh, you could have worked it out in a different way, all right? But um, I, I chose to take this one because it seems to be quicker and easier, okay? So in this case, uh, that is how the cookie crumbles when it comes to the geometric sequence, okay? We will do some past exam questions uh, a little later on. Uh, what I do want you to do is just get yourself familiar, um, you know, with uh, our manner of presentation in this, in this particular case. And for those of you who haven't subscribed, please just consider being part of the family. And thank you so much for joining us. And I'll see you guys again next time. Shab shab.